Karina Gold is Canada's Minister of Democratic Institutions and uh, taking the lead largely in the government's efforts to safeguard the election process for 2019 and an election just, uh, what, nine months or so away. Good to see you again. Good to uh, thanks be here. for coming to speak with me. Let's talk about one of the key measures you've announced mm -hmm. today, and that's this new protocol overseen by uh, federal bureaucrats to inform Canadians when they detect attempts to disrupt or undermine uh, a free and fair election process. Who will make that call? So, I mean, the establishment of the protocol is precisely to ensure that we have a process in place. And part of it is putting together a group of senior bureaucrats who have a lot of experience managing government to make the decision should something arise during the election period. And that will be comprised of the deputy ministers of justice, global affairs, public safety, the national security advisor, and the clerk of the Privy Council. Okay, and, and so what, what kind of threats will they be looking at for? G give me an example. So they're looking at threats of foreign interference. So over the past two years... Just foreign, not domestic? They're not going to alert Canadians if they detect a problem from domestic sources? Well, we have Elections Canada, the Commissioner of Canada Elections, and the RCMP that are tasked with enforcing the law within Canada. Of course, there could be an incident that it's not easily attributable at the exact moment but is having a significant impact on the election. It's also important to note that the threshold for this protocol to come into place will be quite high. They would have to believe that this is having a significant impact on the ability to have a free and fair election. What's also important to note, though, is that this is based on you know experiences that we've seen around the world over the past mm. two years, whether it's the presidential election in the United States, the presidential election in France, the referendum in the UK, uh, you know, the parliamentary elections in Germany, that this is based on things that we have seen before, so they'll be keeping an eye out for those things. H have we seen it before? We've had security agencies in this country talk about uh, the interference in the last federal election in 2015. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so help me out with, was anything we saw previously anything that would trigger this kind of a announcement from this? No. Okay, so, so we, we may have seen yeah. some minor interferences in the past, not enough to Correct. really threaten the system, so there's really, there's not a previous incident you can look to. Not that we're aware of here in Canada. I mean, by its very nature, with regards to covert operations, uh, we have to be able to f figure them out and find them out, and sometimes you might just not know that. But with regards to 2015, the Communications and Security Establishment did a very robust analysis of the cyber environment during that election, and they made public in the report that they saw, you know, kind of low-level attempts, nothing coordinated, nothing that had a great impact. And the CSE will be providing an updated report in the coming weeks and months ahead of the next election, and again following the uh, the 2019 federal elections as well, because we want to make sure that this is a transparent process for Canadians. Are you confident uh, that there will be efforts to undermine the process? Look, we are a NATO member, we're a member of the G7, we're a member of the Five Eyes. It would be naive of us to assume that we are not at risk. I think that what we are doing is taking these risks seriously as a government. We're prepared for whatever threats may arise, and we have a plan in place that's, cross, that's across the government. It has the full weight of the government behind it to assure Canadians that we're doing everything that we can to protect our elections upcoming. We've already heard from some of the critics suggesting that uh, at the very least the optics are not good with this this committee deciding when to inform Canadians that there may be something some kind of a foreign threat that undermines the system when you have uh, bureaucrats inside the federal government who answer to cabinet ministers mm -hmm. deciding that this is something they want to go public with how can you guarantee Canadians that there's no well, whiff of partisanship yeah. here so I would push back against that because we have in fact been engaging in conversations with all of the political parties leading up to today's announcement because what is important is that Canadians can trust that this is an impartial nonpartisan process and so each of the main political parties has had input into the development and of this is this what protocol. they wanted this is what they they wanted bureaucrats to oversee it this is this this has been discussed with them and we continue to maintain ongoing conversations with them something else that we announced no, today asking, did they when you told them that's going to be a it's going to be a committee of senior bureaucrats who will make these calls they were okay with that the other political parties there were no major flags that were raised okay. with regards to this and so that's why for us as a government and for Canadians to know that this is actually something that goes above and beyond partisanship. And it's also worth noting that, you know, the senior bureaucrats that make up this committee have served governments under 
different mm -hmm. political stripes, right? Professional public servants are nonpartisan, and I think that's something that's important to note. The other thing that I, I do want to highlight, because I think it's important for Canadians to note, is that part of today's announcement is that each political party leader will be getting secret level security clearance, and they will also be able to designate uh, two or three of their top officials right. to receive the security clearance and those conversations are ongoing and underway and that's why it's very important that we made this announcement today to continue to build trust and confidence in the process. Why not leave that role to the chief electoral officer? It's, it's that office's job to ensure that elections are carried out freely and fairly. Why not have so that chief, office be the ones to decide the if there's a significant threat? The chief electoral officer is responsible for the administration of the elections. It is not their job to comment on the freeness or the fairness of the election. And I think that's an important um, distinction that needs to be made. And also for the integrity of that position, not to weigh in to uh, the outcome of the election in such a way. We also have the Commissioner of Canada elections, okay, but whose you're, job- For the integrity of that office, the, so there's, you're, you're suggesting there's, there's more integrity than in having the bureaucrats make the call instead of having the chief election the chief officer. The electoral officer has to remain outside of weighing in on the outcome of the election because their job is to administer the elections as such. But doesn't, not that, office have, doesn't that office have more impartiality, nonpartisanship than than I bureaucrats in the federal service? I wouldn't suggest that and the I'm bureaucrats not, are... I'm not, I'm not making that distinction, but I'm saying that's what we're already hearing from some of the critics, that there's a potential here for people who owe their promotions so, in government to the, the ministers they answer to but they, to make these calls. But they have also served under various different governments and they serve with integrity and impartiality. And so I think that this is the right thing. And it's also a group of five, right? Mm -hmm. So that there's going to be conversations, debate about what the impact of making announcement will be. The other part of the protocol is that they will inform all of the political party leaders as well as Elections Canada if they're going to make an announcement. And the important part to remember is in addition to security clearance that will be issued to each of the political parties. They also have a direct connection to CSE and to this group of individuals if they want to have discussions or bring something up. We are, the Government of Canada is putting this in place to ensure confidence in the process. This is really tricky stuff, but we've endeavoured to make this a non-partisan initiative to ensure that Canadians can have confidence not only in the message but in the messenger okay, as well. Your new measures also include an expectation that social media platforms mm -hmm. will uh, protect against interference in the election uh, by promoting what you described today as transparency, authenticity and integrity. Uh, what specifically do you want them to do? So the very first thing that I've asked social media platforms to do is to ensure that if they've put measures in place to protect other democracies and other elections around the world, that they apply those here in Canada as well. So one example is uh, Twitter has an ad transparency center that they use for the midterm elections mm -hmm. in the United States. While C76, the Elections Modernization Act, would require all online platforms uh, to have an ad uh, registry, the Ad Transparency Centre goes even further and so we would expect that Canada receives the benefits of those tools used in other jurisdictions. What if they haven't put them in place in other jurisdictions? What if there's something you want them to do in Canada they don't want to do? So with regards to uh, our expectations with social media platforms, I've been quite clear with them that we had no qualms about legislating the ad registry or the banning of uh, accept, knowingly accepting foreign funding with regards to advertising in C76. Um, so they'll just have to wait and see. All right. So are you, you, are you saying that, are you threatening to say if they, if they don't do what you want them to do, you'll legislate it? I think that we will work together and we'll hopefully see some action on their part. Is that a yes? So you'll legislate if you have to? Well, there's been a lot of work with parliamentarians, both here in Canada and around the world, and Canadians are looking at this issue too, and they have certain expectations. But you, you should be able to tell me that. You, you can tell me that. Are you prepared are to legislate to them if they don't do what you ask we them to do? We haven't been afraid to before. Okay. Um, let me ask this. What, what, because I'm, I'm wondering in, in this scenario, what would compel them to, to, to report a threat to you that they've discovered? Maybe, maybe they don't report the threat. They just shut it down, but they don't say how they did it or why they did it because they don't want to have to publicly say, you know, we publicly well, say we've had a breach and this is what happened because that damages them potentially forever. Although I think we've seen that when they haven't publicly reported it, that it gets discovered and that's damaged their reputation already. I mean, the social media platforms right now, uh, you know, are 
at trying to reignite uh, the trust that their users have in them because we've seen over the past couple of years how their platforms have been manipulated and so I think that they have an inherent interest in demonstrating good faith and working uh, with the government but also with Canadians so that they can trust the information and the way that they use their platforms. Can you, let's finish on this, mm -hmm. um, you want Canadians to be as, as well become, you, you've taken measures to uh, improve literacy and to help Canadians become more uh, aware of where the threats might come from. Uh, what foreign actors should they be concerned about? Well, we have seen examples around the world of foreign interference uh, in the U.S. or uh, in the UK referendum. Uh, we've also seen it with regards to France and I think the important thing for Canadians to remember is that there are some foreign actors that uh, you know s do not have the best interests of Canada in mind and the Canadian government is taking a whole of government approach to protect Canadian interests, to protect Canadians and to protect our who, democracy. Who do you have in mind? Who's the government have in mind? China, as, Russia, as Saudi said, Arabia? There are a number of countries who would seek to undermine our democracy here in Canada and what's important for Canadians to know is that the government takes these threats seriously and we are doing our utmost to ensure that our democracy and our elections are protected. All right, Karina Gold, thank you. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you too. Thanks for having me.